Hey everybody, Clay Archer, CEO of DPC Technology. I've got an exciting one today. Today, Unify is introducing UNAS Generation 2. As you know, I've been using the UNAS Pro for over a year now. I actually use three of them. I have one here at the house, I have one at my office, and my editor Michael has one in Greenville that I use on a daily basis. So I'm really invested in the UNAS ecosystem, and I'm really excited today to add four new products to the UNAS lineup. So the new products are gonna be two new desktop NASs. That's gonna be the UNAS 2 and the UNAS 4. Those both come in black and white. And then there's a 1U rack mount 4 bay UNAS 4 Pro and a 2U 8 bay UNAS Pro 8. So let's get into the specs real quick. In this video, I'm going to go through the specs of each unit and then I'm going to do a complete review of the UNAS 2. I also have a review of the UNAS Pro 8 coming out later this week, so make sure you're subscribed so you get updated when that goes live. But for now, let's go over the specs of these four units. So the UNAS 2 and the UNAS 4 are desktop units. So the UNAS 2 is powered by a single PoE++ cable. It's got a storage bay for two drives. It's got USB-C expansion support, and it's got that LCD screen on the front of it. It's got a super simple and clean setup and design. I've been using it for a while. It really is a nice little desktop device. So if you need more storage than that, you can step up to the UNAS 4, and that is going to have four drive bays. It also comes with two M.2 NVMe storage drives to cache those kind of often used items. This was probably the most asked question or request for me on the original UNAS, so I'm super excited that they added that to this unit. The UNAS 2 will be $199 and comes in both black and white, and the UNAS 4 is $379 and it comes in black as white as well. If there's any changes to that pricing before this video goes live, please check down in the comments. I'll put it down there if there are any changes. So on the pro side, both the 4 and the 8 are going to get 10 gig interfaces supporting MC lag for high availability deployments, dual M.2 NVMe SSD bays for that caching, and modular hot swappable power supplies. So the UNAS Pro 4 will come in at $499 and the UNAS Pro 8 will come in at $799. Like I said, I'll be doing a full video on the UNAS Pro 8 later this week, so keep an eye out for that video or like and subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified when that one releases. But for now, let's get that UNAS 2 unboxed and get that set up and walk through its unique features. So this comes in your typical really well done UNIFI packaging. The device itself is a typical UNIFI nice piece of industrial design. It has some vent holes at the top back of it. On the front of it, it has an LCD screen and a USB-C port. On the bottom, it has its RJ45 connection. This device is 2.5 gigabit and it gets power over PoE++. And on the very bottom, it has a button to release the hard drive chassis. Uh, you just simply push the button and it will eject. The hard drive chassis itself is tool-less. You basically put the two hard drives in opposing each other and then you stick it right back into the device the same way that it came out. There's also a lock. If you push the lock, the button no longer ejects the tray. As I mentioned, this device has a 2.5 gigabit interface. It's also powered by PoE++. Included in the purchase is a 2.5 gigabit PoE++ injector. So if you do not have switching that already has PoE++, you are gonna get that adapter and you're gonna be able to use that to power the device. I actually brought this device with me on vacation and it was really nice to just use the PoE++ injector. So I was able to bring this device with me and have all my files when I was in vacation in Colorado. That was super nice and I didn't have to worry about switching or anything and I just used that PoE injector. It worked perfectly um, and uh, two thumbs up for that. So now let's go back to see how we got this device adopted. All right, so let's get this new NAS adopted. You can see here I'm logged into my UCG Fiber under my devices here. I'm going to click on my USW Pro Max 24 PoE. I have it plugged in here. Y'all go into Port Manager, and you can see I have it plugged in on port 22 here, which is a 2.5 gigabit PoE++ port. You can see by the light blue here that it is uh, connected at 2.5 gigabit, and that it is getting uh, PoE++ here from the port itself. It looks like it's drawing 21.76 watts. And if I click on the device here, I can see its IP address. Now, it also is showing me that on the front of the device itself. It's asking me to either download the app or go to this uh, web address. I'm gonna get go ahead and go to this web address. And you can see it found the device. It plays its nice pretty little animation there and it's asking me to set this up. UNAS2, I'm gonna give this home as well. You can see I have several uh, UNASs at this point and I am calling them either home or work, and so I will go ahead and go next there. And by the way, I could have restored from backup there. I am not, obviously, I'm setting this up for the first time. 
So I'm gonna go ahead here and connect to my UI account. I could also proceed without a UI account and I could create a UI account as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and log into mine and it's gonna make me validate on my phone. I could again restore from backup here, uh, but I don't really want to do. I'm gonna continue without backup. This is gonna be a fresh install and it's gonna go through and it's gonna set up the OS. And it says about one minute left. It doesn't really take very long to do this. I can already see the stats on the front of it and it is good to go. I'm gonna to go to go to dashboard. It's gonna tell me it's not private. I'm gonna go there anyways. And boom, I'm there. It's gonna let me log in there again. And I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. It's gonna have me verify again. And now I am in. All right, so now that we're set up with the account, it's gonna ask us to set up the storage. You can see there is a video playing in the background just telling you how you set up your storage. Uh, that may change by the time it's at release, but uh, really nice little images there of how you would set the drives up. Uh, pretty simple, and uh, you saw Daniel do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on set up storage now, and it's gonna come in here, and it's gonna ask us to add drives. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add drives, and I'm gonna go those two drives. I'm gonna go ahead and click create. And it's going to say that it's going to reformat, and I'm going to go reformat and proceed. And it is creating that storage pool one, and it set it up in RAID one. Now, it didn't give me any options there to set it up in RAID zero. I don't know if that is going to be an option or not. Obviously, you know, the new 3.0 update, there's a bunch of different ways you can configure RAID, but only having two drives here, it probably makes sense that it would only go in a mirror and you wouldn't have any options there to set it up. And you can see I got all of my different links over here uh, and it is doing its thing. I am assuming at this point that I am good to go and can start using it as it's uh, preparing that raid in the background. Although it's saying it's fully operational and good to go. So isn't that cool? One more thing while that's going, I did get an email to set up identity. Identity is awesome. It makes it really easy to manage the drive on your uh, computer. So I clicked that. I already have I, a Unified Identity Desktop Endpoint installed on this computer. So you could click download here if you didn't. I already have it for my other UNASs, but I can load the credentials for this UNAS in it right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And it's gonna say open identity and open it up. And that loaded the UNAS2 into my Unified drive here. And it gives me an option here to enable auto integrate uh, drive. Into File Explorer, I'm going to go ahead and click that. So now in File Explorer, I've got this new drive here, Shared Drive Example, which is that. So that's really cool. There's nothing in there yet because it's brand new and fresh. But that's how easy it is to create that mapped drive. It just does it straight out of identity. All right, so that's all there is to setting it up. I'm going to play with it for a while. I'm going to do some backups to my other UNAS. I'm going to do some speed tests and that kind of stuff. And I will be back shortly after I have done that testing. All right, so now that we've got it acquired, we can jump into the UI. If you have already used the UNAS before, this is gonna be very familiar. Obviously, they keep iterating and make the drive better and better, but you can see just really quickly your overview. You got the UNAS2 home, we got the two hard drives. Uh, we're connected via 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Basic information. The first thing you'll notice that is they've added here is this fan mode, which is really cool. It automatically defaults to balance, but you can turn it up to maximum cooling or you can turn it to quiet. I didn't even realize there was a fan in it at all I'm doing anything until I hit it to maximum cooling here. You probably can't hear that in the background but there is some fan noise now. It sounds like sounds like a, a low level fan. Uh, it is probably louder than you would want it to be, but you know, if you're putting this back into a server closet or somewhere where you're not gonna listen to it all the time, hey, you could turn it up to high and you know, if you were having some heat issues, it was in your garage or something, you could do that. Uh, I'm gonna leave it on balance because I think that's kind of the spot to be, but that's a nice feature set there. Uh, to be able to control some of that. As always, got the basics here. You got your backups, you got your file services and your quick SMB shares here if you want to add it to Windows or to your Mac. And if you have a Mac and you want your time machine to back up directly to this device, uh, it's a great feature. I actually had that enabled because Margaret uses a Mac and we do back it up to the device. And you can see your active users there. You can also see here drives and your snapshots. A really nice, simple, clean interface here, easy to easy to set up. If you wanted to manage your storage pool, change anything, 
Uh, obviously you could through here. If you go to your files here, you can see all your files. You can see I do have a drive plugged into the front of the device. When you plug that in, it gives you a little notification up in the right hand corner. You just go okay to accept that drive being plugged in. Also, if you want to eject that drive, if you just highlight over the drive, uh, you can say eject USB drive and then it'll safely eject that USB drive. But that added USB storage acts like just any other drive on your UNAS. So I can double click on it and explore it and, and do whatever we need to do here. Uh, I can copy files and I can move them if I wanted to move them over into the drive itself. I could, let's just say those were, uh, well, I'll just move them to the, into the root there and I can click move. One thing I will say is you get this little status bar down at the bottom, uh, letting you know that the files are moving and you get these little circles on here. I would like some information on the speed that things are moving. Uh, as you're moving things back and forth, it is nice to know how fast they're moving. If there's a bottleneck, you know, am I using the right USB-C cable? Should I be using a different drive? You know, th those kind of things are nice when you're trying to do these transfers to know, hey, is this what I want, you know, is this moving at the speed that I want it to move or not? But it's super nice to have this. I don't do this as much as I used to because I have these UNASs everywhere and I just copy files from one UNAS to the other, but I used to use the Samsung drive to move my footage from the office to work. But it is nice to have removable storage that you can just plug into the front of the device and just can move it around at will. So next, let's jump into backup real quick. If I create a new task here, I've got a bunch of different items here. I can select what I want to back up. I'll just go, I'm gonna all files here and I'm gonna select, and then I can choose either a remote NAS, and so for me, I've got multiple NASs. Right now I've got that CNUTS 2 uh, backing up right to my NAS home. That's really nice. You can just check the one that you want to. They do need to be on the same virtual network. So if you are going to connect a remote one, you need to do that with SiteMagic before it will see it. If I choose this UNAS Pro, it's going to go connecting and it's never going to do it because I don't have a VLAN set up between it and here. You can also do it to a local share or you could do it to a cloud service. We got uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, Amazon S3, Wasabi and Backblaze B2. All you have to do is link your account and then it'll just automatically go there. So you can do folder updates, which is keep destination server data that doesn't match the names of imported sources files or folder replacement. All destination server files will be replaced by the source data. Basically, this is just saying, do you want to override it or not? You can schedule that. Really simple, really nice, super easy to do. Uh, same thing with snapshots. You can just choose when you're going to do your snapshots. Shared links is really nice. If you have a few files you need to share with somebody, uh, you'll do that. I, you know, I will say for, for me, you can see I've got a couple of drives up here that I've got highlighted here. This is the drive itself if I'm logged into it and this is what I see. But I also have this other drive here. This is actually in Greenville, South Carolina. This is Michael's drive, my editor, who I share files with. So the ability to share files back and forth is amazing. And the cool way I'm able to control the files on all these different UNASs I use is with Unify Identity. So I have it down here in my tray, which you can't see right now, but I'll go ahead and click it and you'll start to see it. So right now I'm on my UNAS2 home here, but I can just click this little arrow and it's got all of the different devices that I control through identity. So I've got this UNAS2 home, I've got my UNAS Pro home, I've got this Greenville NAS, which is the, the device you're looking at right now, which is where I share files with Michael. And I have my UNAS Pro that's at work. And I can click on any one of those and there's just a little arrow here that I can click and it will connect me to that device. So you can see really quickly, I can just control every different drive uh, from one spot and I can copy files and just drop them right in there. So if I have a file from Michael, all I have to do is go in here and I just drag that and just drop it right in here and it will just automatically upload that to Greenville, which is amazing for me. Awesome, really cool. So that's how easy it is to use identity to control my files from wherever I am on whatever device I am. But the question you're probably asking is how fast can I send files from my desktop locally to my UNAS2? So I've got this Linux ISO right here and I am going to go ahead and I've gone through my SMB share to show you the same thing that you can see here in Drive. And I'm gonna copy and paste this to my desktop. So here's my copy and here is my speed. So just as you would think, 250 megabits, you know, we're really, we're jamming here. We're getting all of the 2.5 gigabit uh, speed here. Really happy with that, peaking out at 260. Uh, looks really good, real consistent. That was a six gig ISO uh, in a, a really short amount of time. And then I'm gonna bring it back the other direction. So obviously this is super unscientific. This is one big file and I could do multiple files at once, but you can see going back the other way, I'm getting hitting a little caching issue there. And, but I'm, 
you know, right at that 250. Every once in a while, I'll dip down when I hit uh, a caching issue, uh, which, you know, for me, I, I, when I first heard that the 4 was going to have the NVMe drives, I was like, I don't even know if I really need it. You can see it only dipped down a couple times in that transfer. And, you know, how many seconds did that save me on that transfer? Probably, if I had cash there, I probably could have saved two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. It's not enough that it would really make a difference to me at this drive. But with the four, you're going to be able to have those NVMe drives. And those are probably going to save you a couple seconds there on that kind of transfer. Obviously, the NVMe drives are going to be great, too, for things that you are using all the time that you're, you know, you just want them to be stored in that faster storage. But for 2.5 gigabit transfers, you know, getting 250 meg uh, for, you know, big files like a six gig file here, you can see that that was completely uh, appropriate. But for me, when I'm editing, I could be editing 10, 20 gigabyte files, maybe 30 gigabyte files. I still think that 2.5 gigabit offers you that big first jump in doubling the speed. You know, when you go up to 10, you are going to get, you know, four times the speed. But that first big chunk uh, you could see on a six gig file there, that was not a really long time. And that's more than quick enough for most people. So I uh, really do dig the 2.5 gigabit speeds. And I think these drives are performing really well, even without the NVMe storage. So obviously that's a very unscientific test. Your mileage may vary. I have a very fast network here. Uh, everything that I'm running here is 2.5 gigabit or, or above. And you may have some bottlenecks somewhere. But for me and my network, I think we're getting as advertised speeds and I'm really happy with that. So who do I think this device is for? I think this one may be kind of the everybody device. With drives being super big now, you know, I could put two 20 plus terabyte drives in this thing and have more storage than most people will ever use in just this two bay unit. There is some advantage to going to the four for the casting issues. Also only having two drives only gives you mirroring options as far as your RAID goes. But at $199, I think this is a really compelling device. And I think this is probably the one that most will choose. I'll wait till I have it in my hands to review it against the four and the Pro 4, but I will do that when I get my hands on them and see if that NVMe storage makes that big of a difference. As I mentioned before, I'm reviewing that Pro 8 as well right now. I'm really excited about that chassis as well because we have this entire ecosystem built out now where we've got the one bay four unit chassis, the two bay eight unit chassis, and the chassis of the ENVR now with the 16 drives. And on top of that, we got that classic seven bay chassis that has the LCD screen on it. So we have this whole ecosystem of chassis built out and I'm really excited to see what that looks like for Unify going forward. As I mentioned before, if there's anything you want to see in that upcoming UNAS Pro 8 video, please put them in the comments down below. If you have any questions about the UNAS 2 or any of these other devices, please put those down in the comments as well. As always, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.